This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. This is it. The premiere episode of Daily Blast Live. Kicking it off with everything you need to know in trending news and entertainment. Everyone's talking about last night's Emmy Award shockers, but who really won? The passion, the fashion, or the politics? Hey, welcome to our brand new show, Daily Blast Live. It's Monday, September 18th. Today is our very first day live Woo! on television. We're a trending news and entertainment show that is live, and we cover <laughs> what is happening right now. Our entire DBL team is in our studio, ready to cover news as it's trending. We'll interrupt the show at any time with moments to bring you guys breaking news. <laughs> Woo! I Welcome like to your Ohio State DBL. Buckeye. <laughs> you see my hairline? It's like tattooed on. Listen, you all got to start somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Clearly, we were yelling. I was walking and talking, yeah. coming up. Yes, Tori was dressed like my agent's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> like you had an earpiece and a gray blazer. I was like Zara yeah. looking at the desk. <laughs> all right, we're already off the rails, and the show hasn't even yeah, started yeah. yet. We're, we're going to end the way we started. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Welcome to Daily Blast Live. Can you believe that was our first access show from seven years ago, and now we're sitting here for the final episode. It's been the best ride ever. What was it like for all of you? I remember that first day. I was, like, filled with, like, tense nerves, you know, and I was scared to go on that prompter because everything I did was off the cuff, and I talked to a producer of mine, like, way back when we started, and we need one more host, and he's like, you better say you want to step up and take that job, and he, he's the reason why I wanted to host that. Wow. That right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I don't think people know, like, Jeff, you were very, like, apprehensive about being on the prompter, and I remember one thing that really motivated me is just seeing you all the time on your computer. Jeff worked and worked and worked and got better, and uh, that, it's just like what you've been doing your whole life with football and everything. It's just like you put in that time, man. That's yeah. really cool. Back in the control room working the script. You and did. Yeah. Your yeah. work ethic is unmatched. Oh, thank you. No, it's no one true. has ever said that to me. <laughs> I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. How about you, Erica? What was your, what was that first day? Do you remember that? Oh gosh, um, you know, it's, it's crazy because the first day was like Groundhog's Day, so to speak, because we had been practicing that over and over. By the time that that day came, I had worn that pink jumper like 10 days yeah. in a row. And we were all stinky. That, yeah. that jumper Wait, we was on stinky? fire. Yeah, we were yeah. very, I was wearing the same thing. Like, it was on fire. Uh, yeah, because we had, so it was almost like there's so much about this now that I think about and it's just muscle memory. Like even when I go into other places, which I wouldn't have been able to say before, when people are like, oh, do you need that? And I'm like, just give me what I need, you know, yeah. like, because I'm just so ready. And that's because we really got our over 10,000 hours yes. to master this. And it's such a gift. I, yeah. I want to say this really quickly because Erica unlocked a memory. Do you remember before the studio was even ready and we were practicing? Yes. We would be in the rec room of the yes. Gables apartment complex yeah. and they would have a phone and they'd be like, okay, Sam, you're on camera and you're there. Not, oh, yeah, you, you and they'd be like, okay, well, you're on. Sometimes nothing. They'd yeah. just be like, we're the camera. <laughs> Great yeah. memory. <laughs> well, that you know, well, I was looking right at Sam, so I had, I had to in include her. But yeah, we were, we started with like like, like a cell phone. Yeah. And here we go. Yeah. I had here to we are. I had to include her. <laughs> we don't care about your guys' memories. No, we got to move on. We got some other stuff. There has been no shortage of celebrity stories out there for us to cover. So remember Johnny Depp's crazy trial with oh his ex God. Amber Heard. What's the first thing that popped in everybody's head? You don't say it out loud but we all know what it is. Yes, yes. something right. inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the bathroom. That was in for six weeks we did that for. Oh, wow. It felt like more like six years. Then there was last year's Barbenheimer mashup that also seemed to last forever. I can't believe that was just last year. But what was your most memorable story we covered on the show, Sam? You can start with you. I would say Britney Spears only because it's how we covered it. And this is what I love so much about our show is we take a sensational tabloid story like Britney Spears and we unpack it. And we talked about her mental health. We humanized her. We even gave out hotlines to other people who may be suffering from mental health issues. As someone who also suffers from a mental health issue, I appreciated that. And so I'll never forget how our crew and producers and everybody, us, has thoughtful conversation rather than just rushing to, you know, completely... Um, just playing a card. And I know it's not even it's salacious. More, I well, yeah. I just I'm 
very emotional today. And um, I'm just really proud because I don't think from, and I know it's just Britney Spears, but I'm proud of how we humanize everything we do. And um, there's not a lot of, of that out there. And so. I have to thank you for that. I actually apologized to Britney, not that she was, was watching. Which was so but, beautiful. No one does that. Yeah, but like you, what you're saying is like we treated her like a human being. And I think you're totally right and about this show. And you apologized like a like, human yeah, being. And I was like, yeah, I did it wrong. I played that game wrong. So I appreciate you saying that. I'm going to be speechless a lot today, just so you know. I think it's natural. Yeah, yeah it's very natural. I, I think that's fair. I like making fun of Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I want to say thank you uh, for being a good sport if you ever watch. But I think that's just a relatable thing to make fun of Gwyneth Paltrow. And uh, everyone needed that space. We, she knows what she's doing. She was sort of trolling us with the goop. Things were like $8,000 million for like a sauna. So it was like, I don't know. I always had fun on this show. And I liked kind of ribbon people. Be a little edgy. Yeah, a little looser this show. A little show. looser. Yeah. So that was, I always just had fun with the audience with that. What about you, Kat? I loved the evolution of Beyonce because we I mean, no it. one, mm -hmm. right? No, and and she brought us along with her. I mean, Renaissance culmination last year was just, I mean, it was a pop culture, more than a pop culture uh, moment. It's it will live on forever, mm -hmm. and we had so many conversations about Beyonce and like her impact on the world through pop culture, and I just really appreciated being able to dissect more on what was actually happening as opposed to just being like, sweet. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. That's right. I mean, for me, I'll tell you, it was definitely the Will Smith, uh, Chris Rock altercation. What are you talking uh, about? I don't remember that. <laughs> it just, I just remember that night, my phone wasn't even on ring. It was vibrating so much that it woke me up. Like, think about how much that has to be and the, the, the fallout from it and the different sides, people saying, somebody said something about my wife, I would have said something. So other people are like, how dare you do that at the are Oscars? Are you as a comic? Are you, it, yeah, and I saw it differently as a comic and I know how vulnerable you are up yes. there. And you work, you talk about 10,000 hours, you probably do 20,000 gigs to get that gig. Mm. Yes. And to be humiliated on an international stage like that, but then to handle it like you did with the Netflix special, I just, I thought it was a, a, just a fascinating story to cover from all aspects. And it was interesting to hear from different people because I didn't know how many people would be like no Will Smith should have done that and that's one of the things Jeff how many times have we talked on this show Erica about you know there's a story where you're like well this is black and white and then half the people are like no I see it the totally different way yeah. so that's it's been enlightening well compliment us we handled it well what about we all sides um, speaking of 10,000 hours I know more about four people that if I didn't have this job I would never Ooh. know of <laughs> Taylor Swift and, yeah. and uh, Kelsey, Kelsey and then Benifer, <laughs> Ben Affleck. I knew where they Benifer. were, what city they were in, God, what annoying. they were doing, how many cigarettes he smokes a day. <laughs> it's like enough. Ten th we go in a meeting and I'd just be like, <laughs> oh my God, Benifer. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a good memory, but it's a memory that's tattooed well, in there forever. It, I mean, what about Axis Taylor was in last night. This has been your baby. You I, have really made Axis your own, Jeff. Well, I worked really hard, like you said, from the beginning. So I have really, and I don't, I'm going to get emotional at some point, but my emotions are all over the place because it's a bittersweet day here. It's my son's sixth or seventh birthday, Happy or no, he's six. I have a seven-year-old and a six-year-old oh now, God. which is crazy to say. Then but I uh, feel like you're lying when you say it, when you tell how old yeah, your kids are. But, you know, I had like an epiphany on a way to work. I always have like imposter syndrome, like I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And then today I was driving and I'm like, it's my son's birthday, I should be happy for him, but also grateful for the time we spent here, right? Mm -hmm. I spent seven years on a national TV show. And I came from five years hosting before that. We all belong here. We all belong here. It might be ending here, but this isn't the end for us. You know, it's a new day, a new chapter, and uh, that's a testament to everybody in this room. You know, teaching us, staying with us, believing in us, you the audience. So we're gonna thank you more later, but before we get emotional, which we will. Coming up on DBL, we're taking a look back at the best moments from our best celebrity interviews. It's gonna be fun.
arguing never stopped. <laughs> Welcome back to DBL. We had the privilege of interviewing some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Here's a look back at just some of our, or some of our favorite episodes, or just roll it. <laughs> And just turn up the turn up the notch on that. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. Hey, how you guys doing? You're so cute. Al. He's your oh. favorite. You sound great and you look great. Thank you very much, Sean Samos. That means a lot. I can tell she was feeling so so. Let's do a live Heck performance. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Are you a drummer? Yeah. You on top of your game. <laughs> what a pleasure it is to look at all of you. I could not miss celebrating with you all. Oh. I was listening to your conversation. So um, interesting. This may be the only talk show on television where everybody doesn't talk at the same time. And I love that, and I thank you for that. Wow. I love you. It's an honor for me. Oh. Thank you. I love you all. Too. Oh, congratulations. Is that the only Enjoy. Some big names. Some um, big names, and that's just a few of them. I'm glad I was able to get all those guests. I was texting. <laughs> Allie, can you come through? Uh, Sam, did you have a favorite? Mine was Matthew McConaughey. That was the time where my brother-in-law, Eric, had just recovered from his double lung transplant during COVID. And he read Matthew's book, and he said it was you so inspiring Eric. to him. And then Just when I shared with Matthew so Eric's story, he gave advice to Eric. And then I showed that clip to Eric while he was in his hospital bed. And it just gave Eric the strength that he needed. And, you know, even though we lost Eric, we got seven extra months mm -hmm. with Eric. And he had seven extra months with my sister and with his kids. And I will forever have to look at that seven-month period as just... A blessing to have seven more months with someone that you love. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. How about that you? is beautiful. And that was amazing when he said that. Amazing. I remember that. I felt the energy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Matthew was touched. She was really. Yes. That was very special. Um, I got to interview my absolute icon. And not only did I get to do that, I got to tell her how I felt. It was Carol Burnett. Yep. When does that happen? Isn't your production company named after her? Yeah. Her play, um, Noises Off, she was in Doors and Sardines, is my production company. And I don't know, there's something about looking straight into your idol, knowing she's not a diva, yep. and actually telling her that you got, she's the reason you got into this business. She took special time to come, and she only interviewed with me. And I don't know, that moment will say to her, what you said was, she didn't, she didn't inter interview with anyone else. And I always felt like whenever I think of imposter syndrome, I always think of that interview to be like, I'm not an imposter. Carol Burnett and I cried together. Yes. <laughs> so there. <laughs> what about you, Ka? I'm going to say Jennifer Lewis. Oh, yeah. um, when we had Jennifer Lewis on the show, um, she was talking about her epic comeback from a slip and fall off a balcony that was like, I think, over 10 feet. She broke like so many bones in her body. And I remember my mother telling me, you need to have Jennifer Lewis on your show. She is your comeback queen. And the next week, we had her on That's the show, and she actually sang a comeback song original that she told me I could use for my podcast. Or <laughs> <That's laughs> the fun. manifestation <laughs> cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Mine was a, a surprise. I was always, like, excited. I always liked Ernie Hudson. Uh, but, you know, when we got to know him over the course of several interviews, I remember this one. He was uh, talking to us about uh, he was plugging Quantum Leap, that new show he was doing. So we asked him the question, if you could Quantum Leap everywhere, anywhere where would you go and he said something really beautiful he said I was adopted so I'd like to go back and see where my parents met and I was not ready for that Holy it just like I think I don't know it, it impacted me and not Jeff that just man that he, he's all-time favorite what about you yeah. bro there's so many favorites I mean I picked Matthew McConaughey as well because that interview was amazing yes what an amazing guy Mark Wahlberg you know those are big names but Sean William Scott oh, oh yeah someone I loved Bonded. interviewing yeah I feel like we would really hang out in real life <laughs> if we had the chance to meet we would definitely hang out so he just made me laugh he just seems like a fun guy and uh man so many I wonder how many people that we interviewed because we interviewed a lot that we could go up to on the street and just be like hey what's oh. up Sean I'm mm -hmm. Jeff from DBL. Do you remember? Like, they would pretend they remembered, but at least <laughs> I, we have an in. I, I, yeah. I don't think I don't that's remember. true. I, I think don't, they yeah. would. We're not I, like most talk shows. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I think that you're wrong because just being out, like, on red carpets and stuff, I'm always introducing myself, and people will say, like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> We're in a bubble yeah, here yeah. in Denver. Well, yeah, my I imposter think... Simpson syndrome's back. Yeah. <laughs> it's back. Syndrome. Yeah. syndrome. syndrome. <laughs> the joke's till the end. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to DBL. Before we officially say goodbye, a lot of you have been asking what's next for us. So we're going to hand it off to Erica, who could speak the best. Why don't you tell us? Sure. So uh, we all fumbled like eight words no, in the like first that way, it was yeah, But on camera, true. it plays like you're pointing I was out pointing to Erica. Let me get this out, okay, y'all. Sorry, sorry. This See? is very important. <laughs> sorry. A lot of you have reached out to us on social media and beyond to ask how you can continue to engage with us. So the five of us hosts are going to have a new chapter. We're calling it Daytime Talk After Dark. Whee! And it will be a podcast and a YouTube that you will be able to engage with us in real time or listen at your leisure. Um, but this is our grassroots. Um, we are independent content creators, which I know a little bit about. But together, we are going to try to get this train off the tracks, and we need you to help do it. So please follow us on Instagram at Daytime Talk After Dark and be a part of the ground floor of yes. this new journey for yep. us. Come yeah. enjoy. Have a little kiki, have a little drink with us at night. So yeah. when we do the promo, cut where Erica stops. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> hey. Tori, you, you told me you wanted to talk about your sign. <laughs> oh, God, you're the worst. <laughs> so we do, no, I'm not talking about the sign. All right, so I got a, a sign. I got a neon sign, and I a spent a lot of time. after dark, dark sign. Neon that sign. That will be, because this will not only be uh, auditory, you know, people can listen, but you can also be watching us because, you know, there's a lot of podcast platforms that now show visually. Like we got Spotify. it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so our viewers might not know. I know, but and they understand have, visual. No, I'm not I done. <laughs> then we have our YouTube as well that's coming on as well, but I just want people to know that Tori has a sign. <laughs> You're the worst. I just want to let you know I was in charge of the sign and it took, it got very complicated, but I'm done with the sign. It's well, here. Does the sign work? I have it. Have you plugged it in? I have it. Oh, the sign. It's so funny. I'm scared about this sign. They sent a picture of the sign. I, I think we we're should. doing a little inside baseball, but this was, uh, like thousands of text we messages. Should, uh, well, I was like, gonna say, just get the sign. Did we, just get it. Yeah. What about how many times did we meet? There were just two to come yeah. up there with a two. podcast. <laughs> so we may have a podcast. No, we do. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying. not sure. We're, it may happen. And it might be not. auditory no, or not. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> It will happen. September we, 11th, you guys got to tune in, okay? We are going to have a weekly podcast. We love you guys. And it was because of our DBL Nation that we did this. That's correct. Because we did not realize how much you guys appreciated us and wanted to be a part of us. And we love you. And this is going to keep the momentum going. And I'm Absolutely. so grateful. Absolutely. Today, say something to the audience, Tori. Thank them for their time. For real? Yeah. Thank you, for honestly, for the connection. Because we needed it. A lot of us needed it. I needed it. I was lonely. All right. Okay. We're, we're all going to give some <laughs> heartfelt goodbyes when we come back. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to DBL. Well, it's that time. DBL Nation for seven seasons. You let us into your homes and allowed us to become part of your family as well. We want to thank you so much for that. We also want to thank, of course, our producers, our incredible production crew, yes. and the people in the control room. Karen, our pro well, the producer for this show who dealt with me for a lot of years, put destroying all of her scripts that she wrote. So thank you so much for being patient with me. You're the best. And our control room. Can we get a shot in there? Yes, because yes. the people yes. behind the scenes, you guys are the best in there. Everybody from head to toe, truly, I love you. I love you. Oh, We're rolling yeah. credits, and we still have a minute left. I, I so I this is how this show goes. <laughs> I, I want to say this really quickly. Uh, you know, we had the camera on Karen, and Karen uh, has been really fighting uh, some Diff different health issues and Karen, we just want to say we are here for you. Uh, we love you. Love so you, Karen. Love you the most. You're so strong. Those Canadians. Those Canadians. Say to Jeff, Jeff, you held down this show. You made access your own. You have a whole fan base that are obsessed. You be you created a cult like show, and that's hard to do. Thank so you bravo so much. to you. Thank you. It means a lot. Get down there, Mr. Feelings. <laughs> It's been a ride. It's been a ride. <laughs> yeah. I, I, some of my favorite memories have come from this show and how delirious we were at the end of the yeah. day and just made this happen every night. And I, I'm just so grateful. I feel like so there needs grateful. to be an oral history written of this show. And like, <laughs> oh we'll give it some space, yeah. but just like, yeah. The, yeah. Could it be, there's could some it be stories. found on auditory? As well? Yeah, yeah. As well but as they can video. look at it in it some kind of talk after visual dark. medium of some <laughs> sort. But you so can true. It. Before we go out, DBL, DBL Nation, we just want to salute you from all of us here at the desk and the whole crew. Thank you for doing what we love for seven years. We're incredibly blessed. We love you. Thank, Thank you, you guys.